Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our final Professor Circle for spring uh, 2023. Uh, this particular semester, we have uh, delved into and looked very closely at the common read um, that uh, UNLV is using this year and providing uh, tips and uh, strategies in order to use that to use that and to uh, be helpful to our students. And so I, I obviously want to thank Karen for uh, all of her work in, in putting um, these this series together. And uh, as I said, thank you all uh, for sticking with us this semester and being part of this really amazing uh, series. I think that we've called it tell you tell me who you are and today we will be looking at um, incorporating the common read into best practices and so this will be something that could be used not only for this common read or for, but for common reads that that we have in the future and so with that I am going to hand this session over to Karen Violante. Hey good morning everybody um, thank you for being here with us today. As, as Harriet shared, we're very appreciative of your support and your willingness to be here today to share in this conversation with us. Um, I'm hoping everybody can see the PowerPoint okay, but I just wanted to uh, take a minute or so to, to share what, our, what we hope to cover in our time today. Um, I'm gonna take a second to um, introduce the, the panel, let the panel introduce themselves actually. Um, we're going to um, talk just a little bit. Um, I think as most of you know, we had a session also in March um, when we had uh, Dr. Shreve, who I know is here, um, and some other colleagues talk about um, Brett and Jenna, also from COLA and Lee Business School, talk about um, the common read as a high impact practice. So I'm just going to go back and just kind of reshare a little bit of that information. Um, our March one did go in a little more in depth on, on the common read itself. So um, if you're interested in, in going back to view that workshop, as Harriet said, it's on the YouTube, the YouTube channel for the intersection, if you're interested in going back and watching that recording. And then I'm gonna hand things over to the panel to talk a little bit about how they have incorporated um, the common read into their classrooms, um, you know, and what that experience has been like for them. So, um, so they are the stars of the show today. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit at the end about um, next steps for the common read and then be here to answer any questions that anybody has. So um, I'm going to ask the, the panel members to introduce themselves and then um, I'll move forward with just some background information on the common read. So who would like to go first? Renee, Julie, Timothy? Um, I can go first. Okay, great. All right, so hi, my name is Renee Malouf. I'm a grad student getting my Master of Education in Curriculum and Instruction with an emphasis in Multicultural Education. I'm also a grad assistant for the Academic Success Center, helping out with the first year seminar. And last semester, I got to teach COOL 100E, the first year seminar offered by the ASC, where I incorporated the Common Read. I guess I'll go. Um, my name is Julie Johnson. I'm the director of student success initiatives for the College of Fine Arts. And I teach um, CFA 100 for the College of Fine Arts. And I've been teaching it for um, several years now. And uh, that's about it. Thanks, Julie. I'm Timothy Jones, and I am currently the coordinator for the College of Fine Arts first year seminar course, the CFA 100 course. And I've been developing and teaching first year seminar courses for about eight years. And um, I am not currently teaching CFA 100, but I will be uh, going into this fall and I'm looking forward to getting back into that. Um, we're really doing some good looking at our programs and uh, trying to redefine and redevelop what our students need. And this is where the common read fits in. And it's uh, really been an integral part of finding connection between students and students and faculty. So I'm excited to contribute today and going forward. Great, thank you all so much. Really 
again, appreciate you being here and, and your willingness to share your work with us, your work and your experiences with us today. Um, and, and thank you again to everybody who's, who's attending today to learn more about the Common Read. Um, this first slide, again, is just a, a little bit of background information on the Common Read, um, that just as a um, continuation of the conversation that we started in March. Um, the Common Read, as, as most people know, the, is, a, is considered a high impact practice on the national front um, and is a, um, a staple in many first year experience programs across the nation. Um, it offers, and I, and I think you know, some of the panel has already shared this, it really offers this, this space for students and faculty and the community to, to come together um, and, and have um, this, this thing uh, to kind of find some common ground um, in terms of conversation and discussion and community, um, which is, of course, our, our goal when students are transitioning and, and into our community is to be able to find a space where we can connect with them and start to build those really rich relationships with them. Um, so the Common Read um, is a tool, is one tool that, that a lot of FYE programs use and a lot of universities use um, to, to create and provide that space. Um, and it also, and it says this on the slide, but it, it really does bridge across the entire community. So it's, it's unique in that respect because it can work um, curricularly and co-curricularly, which we talked a little bit about in March and I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll touch upon today as well. Um, as you can see on the, the other part of this slide, um, it, it, this is really implemented in, in so many different ways. And I think that's, again, the beauty of any high impact practice that, that we're using, especially when um, we're connecting with our FYE experiences. Um, this can, again, in and out of the classroom, you see, you can see the common read and new student orientation. Um, summer experiences, we want to connect with students long before they're even here. I mean, we're already working with our fall cohort as of the end of March. So this is an early and often <laughs> conversation. So the common read does allow us to have that tool to open up those conversations. Um, throughout the summer, and then, of course, into new student orientation, um, any pre um, kind of pre start of classes um, experiences um, like Rebel Ready Week will be at UNLV this year, um, peer mentoring programs. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with these types of things. So, so across the nation, um, these are just some, some ideas that are happening. Um, and a lot of this is happening as well at UNLV, um, which we're excited about. As I mentioned, this is just kind of a, a, a reinforcement and, and of, of the goals of the UNLV Common Read, again, nationally. Um, and I think you'll see by, by what we're sharing, we are doing our best at UNLV to align with, with what is happening nationally in terms of, of creating, again, this shared space and opportunity for students to connect to the community, to each other, to our faculty, to our staff through this common um, conversation. Um, or, and, terms of that academic growth, but also personal growth. Um, so it's, it's, it's a win-win in terms of a tool, um, providing just those different avenues for, for us to have those conversations with students and uh, allow for that space for students to share their stories um, and who they are with us um, as they join our community. Without further ado, because this is why we're all here, I'm super excited to hand things over to our faculty panel. Um, I know they introduced themselves, but um, we did share everybody's name again on the screen. Um, so Timothy Jones, again, from Fine Arts, uh, Julie Johnson from Fine Arts, and Renee, who's with us from the Academic Success Center. So again, welcome. And I think we're gonna start with Renee. Yes, so Renee, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Amazing. Okay, so I'll get to what's on the slide in a second. Feel free to glance on it and process it as I give context for Coal 101st um, and then kind of my overall approach with using the common read and then I'll get to kind of the specifics on the slide. So Coal 100 e is a first year seminar at UNLV. There are many offered by the colleges across campus. Um, COLA 100 e comes out of the Academic Success Center and the student population within that course is a lot of exploring majors, major pathway students. We get some student athletes because of the services offered by the ASC. And then there are also students who are declared majors 
And so within a fall semester, there's around 40 sections of the first year seminar. Um, and we get around a thousand students, which is to say that there are a lot of instructors within the fall, both instructors who have taught Cole 100 e for years and also first time instructors like I was. Um, but I had a bit of an advantage going in, I think, because I'd been a grad assistant for the year before helping out with a first year seminar. So I was familiar with the content and the material, thinking about activities I could do which meant that I felt more comfortable taking on the common read as well when I was teaching this course for the first time. Uh, and so we're given a kind of standard syllabus for the course that goes over the topics that we should hit on, but we have free reign to kind of do whatever activities we would like. As far as how we were asked to incorporate the common read across the board, we were asked to at least include like two to three of the stories from Tell Me Who You Are, um, and then have some sort of learning assessment. Um, part of the flexibility that instructors have is choosing what learning assessments we can do. So things like quizzes, journal prompts, things like that. Uh, and so as far as my approach in using the common read, I knew going in that I wanted to use it as much as I could. There's a, a lot of material that we go over within the course. So I knew I couldn't use it necessarily every day, but I wanted it to feel as like it was part of the course as opposed to kind of an add-on thing that felt like to students that it was last minute and then it came out of nowhere. And I think that Tell Me If You Are works really well with a first year seminar course um, because it's a place for students to kind of adjust themselves within a college setting and learn more about themselves as they start to take in everything um, within their first year. So, I looked at the syllabus I was given and kind of an advantage that we have is we have a textbook that we use that goes over kind of student success topics like time management, um, growth mindset, managing failure, things like that. But we also have another kind of book that we use called Callings. That's similar to Tell Me Who You Are in that it's a bunch of stories from people. In this case about their careers and about their professions because the theme of the first year seminar um, is major in career exploration. So it works really well with that, which meant that when I looked at the syllabus, I just figured an easy way to incorporate the common read was to either add those readings on the days when we were using callings or to replace it completely. So for example, looking at the slide for that first one with Aubrey's story, we also had a callings reading. So I kind of added it to that and in the case of like increasing critical thinking, I just had us use Tell Me Who You Are instead of Callings because I felt like it fit better and I had an idea for it. Um, so yeah, so there were five topics that ended up kind of working really well, I think with the common read. Um, and I wasn't so prepared that I knew what readings we were going to do at the start of the semester. I hadn't. Like we did citizenship and ethics like in November. I couldn't think that far ahead, um, but I had read the whole book before the start of the semester and I had kind of reading selected. I think also intentionally, I didn't want to choose that far ahead because I wanted the stories that I chose to kind of match with the students that I had, if that makes sense. So I needed to get to know them before I listed anything on the syllabus. Um, and so, I think in an ideal world, I would have had time to think of a longer term kind of project for students to work on. But the way it ended up looking like within the classroom was a lot of kind of discussion based things. Um, I would provide guiding questions. They would talk about it within groups and then we could talk about it within the class is kind of the trend that we had. There were some journal prompts that I posed to students and they wrote about it and kind of reflected on things themselves that way too. So there wasn't some overarching thing I think if I use the common read again, that's something that I would wanna to work toward, which is why I'm excited that I know we're using the common read again next year because it gives instructors kind of time to think about something longer term like that. But um, I'll give a couple examples. I've gone back and forth on how much detail to give on each of the things on this slide. Um, and if there are further questions about it, we can get to that at the end, but I'll share two examples from what we did in class. So the inquiry and critical thinking 
Again, there's so much within the tome if you are, that you could go however, whichever way you wanted to go with it. Um, you can see on the right side of that table, kind of the themes that the readings touch on. And so I chose the stories from Autumn and Butler because, and I asked students this, I didn't tell them, I asked them why did they think I paired these together, but I'll tell you why I paired them together. Uh, it gets at them thinking about critically about their education and who is and is not included in the education they received and that they will receive. So in the case of Autumn, she talks about how when she was younger, um, I think in elementary school, her teacher was telling her these things about indigenous people and using words like savages. Um, and she told her dad about it and her dad went down to the school um, and did something about it. And the teacher said that, you know, she wouldn't teach it that way anymore. But Autumn was still really, really, you know, looking back on it, reflective of the fact that the teacher had been teaching it that way for years before though, and there are teachers who are probably still teaching it that way. Um, and in the case of Butler, um, at the start of the section with Butler's story, because the authors Winona and Priya of the Tell Me Who You Are um, have kind of introductions to each of the sections, talk about how when they met with Butler, he said, like, I bet you can't name a black woman outside of Rosa Parks who contributed to the civil rights movement and they couldn't. And so I chose Butler's story because he talks about how his mom was part of the Montgomery bus boycotts and her role in it. And again, thinking critically about education, what was not taught to you? Did you recognize these names? Um, and I asked the students that and admitted myself like I only recognize one other person that was mentioned within Butler's kind of story. And so, like I mentioned beforehand, the way that we did it in class was they got in groups, I gave them guiding questions about just what their reactions to the stories were, what they felt they learned about themselves and what they learned growing up. Um, and they made great connections about how, you know, some students were taught some things and some students weren't taught other things. Um, and so I really enjoyed that conversation that we had. Uh, and then the other kind of activity, I guess, that I'll touch on was the growth mindset and managing failure row. Um, there were two stories for that as well. Um, there's growth mindset and fixed mindset. We can think about that in the context of education, but I also wanted to touch on it in the context of kind of the social relationships that we have and how we interact with people. And these two stories get at that about how, and in the case of like Alexa, Justin, and Jennifer, they were teenagers who realized because of the different schools that they went to that you know their parents taught them something they learned something in school and then realized that like actually we're not supposed to use these words with people um and so the self-reflection that these students did um and then the new perspectives that they gained and i paired this with the danger of a single story ted talk which i haven't seen i highly recommend um i've seen it in so many classes and i really enjoy it um, in the TED talk, Trimanda Nagoji Adichie um, talks about how limiting and harmful it is to ourselves and to others when we view them as only one thing. So thinking about stereotypes and that I felt paired really well with the idea of growth mindset. And so again, how that played out in the classroom was, you know, us watching the video, it's like 20 minutes, so it takes up a bit of time, but then asking them their reactions to it and how it pairs with the tell me who you are readings. Um, and so if there are further questions about what I did, I can we can get to that at the end. But I present like this table to you to kind of see the topics, the, the different readings, where they are, if you want to look into them further and how they get at the themes that are there. Um, like I mentioned, if I did this again, I kind of wouldn't want to do maybe like a longer term thing. I offered extra credit to students working with the Tell Me Who You Are book and the extra credit that I did was pulled from an assignment that Brett Dedkin put together from Lee Business, um, giving them options of things to choose. And so maybe working toward that, I had a student who did like a video where they told me who they were and I ended up really enjoying that. And so maybe working that something like that in, um, but working with different mediums, maybe having them work together to create like a class, tell me who you are kind of like book, I thought would be fun. But again, it takes longer term planning that I could not do because I'm a grad student. I was taking three classes last semester, so it didn't happen. But, you know, for future projects, 
Um, and so I think kind of main takeaways for me and maybe for others is that you can use the common read to cover a variety of topics. Um, three of the topics that I have here are the ULOs, the University Undergraduate Learning Outcomes, which all students are meant to work toward no matter what their majors are. And I think a lot of instructors want to get at things like critical thinking or like communication is another one. So it can cover a lot of things. You can couple it with other material like I did with the TED Talk. Um, the stories are also short enough that you can by all means have students read them in class and then work on something within class. Um, and like I mentioned before, like you don't have to have a complete plan going in. I only knew the days that I wanted us to do the readings and then I figured it out the week or the couple of weeks before what the actual readings were. Um, so yeah, that's me. Thank you, Renee. That was really helpful and so wonderful to hear about your journey and kind of how it all unfolded. And I think it was really um, great also to kind of share your insights on, on what you would do differently moving forward as, um, as we all continue to, to learn um, different ways that we can use this tool. So thank you so much to Renee. Um, and if you have questions, start to jot them down. We'll have some time at the end um, for our panel to answer questions. So. So Timothy and Julie, I know you're in the same college, so I'm not sure who wants to go first and or you want to kind of talk together, whatever works for, you, for both of you. Well, I have more of an overview and Julie is in the trenches with this stuff. So um, perhaps I'll give just a little overview of what's happening with CFA 100 and then hear some specifics about that. Uh, so first of all, it's the idea of a common read connects the entire campus, it's not just the students in that class or the first year. Well, it's all first years, but the, perhaps the college. Um, we've used common reads in the past, um, but they've typically been more goal oriented. And so therefore it's much, they're very good, but it's very easy to um, isolate that class and work on that as a individual isolated unit. So this connects everybody on the entire campus. And I think just subconsciously, it helps to bring that sense of connection, which is, I know, something we are very much trying to work towards. Um, so I noted three really important purposes for the common read, and also that played into the outcomes as well. Um, the first is that students identify with the stories in the book, and it's uh, they don't identify with every single story, but they identify with more than just one. And they can see what's going on. They see that there are similarities. Um, that So it leads into the second point, which is, is connected. But they understand that there are people that lead similar lives to them, that have gone through similar experiences, have faced similar challenges. And so it lays the groundwork in a lot of ways for what to expect as they enter into their educational careers and how they might plan for the bumps in the road coming up. We always plan for success, but what about some of those things that you know might be coming at you that um, could provide challenges to your success? So I think understanding how others went through those things that have a similar path to you is very helpful. Um, and it just shows that they fit in. And then thirdly, for the instructors that our instructors learn who their students are in a more meaningful way. Um, understanding how those stories play in and the, the backstories on people uh, really helps to engage and interact with students uh, in, in the right way. Uh, it's very easy to go in and do the pep talk and do things that get kids excited, present exciting material, but what about connecting with them personally so that they feel supported through their college education. I think that that's, uh, first of all, meaningful, but also humbling because I know that I, what I thought I knew about a lot of my students was only part of the story. And so I think it is really helpful to, to have that information going in. So as far as CFA 100 goes, um, especially with the asynchronous courses, you know, how do you make that connection? Uh, the ways that that has taken place is through uh, uh, discussion boards contributing to questions uh, that uh, require them to comment and respond to their peers. Uh, 
uh, simply doing summaries of uh, some of the stories in the book. And that might be stories that the student uh, relates to, choosing eight to 10 stories, or it could be stories that they empathize with. So those are two different things. And so again, bringing understanding and uh, trying to help students understand who else is in the room with them. And yeah, very, very important. Uh, sometimes answering specific questions about uh, stories that were presented to them by the instructor. Uh, and then of course, at the end of the book, that opportunity to construct their own story and again, to reinforce the fact that that helps them to develop goals, but it helps them to understand the road going forward and the things that may uh, interact with those goals and how they can achieve success. So that's a little bit about the overview for, for fine arts. And we, we're looking to get into this in, in a deeper way going forwards. Um, so I'm very happy to see that we are using this book again and uh, more, more on that later, but I'll let Julie uh, talk about how specifically she has used this in her class and some of the colleagues she's interacting with. Thanks, Tim. Um, I spoke with the, we have nine sections of CFA 100, so we service whatever nine times 25 is. I'm an English major, so do the math. Um, and I spoke with a couple of different people um, one professor uses this, centered her entire curriculum around this. Um, she uh, does uses most of the book. Uh, they do a lot of the most of the readings and discuss it throughout the entire semester. And one of her culminating projects is to have um, each student write a personal narrative. And uh, she compiled all of their stories into an entire chapter of Tell Me Who You Are and is going to disperse it with their permission to future students uh, throughout, you know, uh, in other classes. Um, she, uh, so that was her, uh, her ultimate goal. Um, what I did, the way I have my class set up is, um, the academic component, uh, because all of my students, or the vast majority of my students are fine arts majors, um, we talk about, um, aside from doing all of the uh, first year experience things, you know, study skills, um, time management, so on and so forth, um, the academic content is art through um, film. And I take it uh, from the 1960s and we compare the 1960s to today. Uh, what's similar, what's different. Um, we talk about um, the um, Civil Rights Act of 1964. We compare um, uh, what's changed, what hasn't, what needs to change, so on and so forth. So this textbook really ties in um, super well with all of that. And what I did was um, I came up with a series of questions for each chapter and uh, we did it on a discussion board uh, and the students had to, uh, they had a, a, they could select um, a number of uh, essays to read for, or stories to read from each chapter. They could pick whichever stories they wanted to read and then they had to answer a question on the discussion board and how to respond to at least two classmates. And then I went in to the discussion board and responded to each one of my students. And we had a dialogue going back and forth um, throughout the entire semester. This gave me a great opportunity to get to know my students and they got to know each other. And then we tied it into uh, what we were talking about in class um, about society um, and what they encountered. And some of those questions, and I'll just give you um, uh, an example of some of those. Um, we talked about um, in chapter eight, and I kind of rearranged the chapters um, based on what we were talking about in class. Um, in chapter eight, diversity is not the goal. Um, we talked about why diversity and equality were not enough. Mm -hmm. and 
they had to um, explain why it wasn't enough. And then uh, when in your life have you encountered inequalities? Have they happened to you personally or to others around you? How have you reacted in these situations? And do you think after reading these stories, your reaction might be different in the future? Why or why not? So um, I got some really great answers to that. And the responses to their classmates um, were really telling about their experiences and really got them thinking about the roles they play in society. And um, another one uh, we talked about, um, uh, we are all normal in chapter seven. Uh, talk about a time you felt out of place. Why did you feel you didn't belong? What do you do to combat those feelings? So we had questions like that. They really got to know each other. They got to know themselves better. And one of our goals in CFA 100, um, because fine arts is, is a degree or a college where they're sometimes very siloed by their majors, but they need to uh, collaborate. That's one of our goals is, is learning to collaborate. They need to get to know each other. And this book uh, really taught them that. They need to be able to work together um, and they need to do that with their majors. Uh, collaboration is key. And this brought them together, answering these questions, uh, helped them learn that. They came together as a class. Um, they came together physically in class, but emotionally and um, on a deeper level by answering these questions. Uh, and I got to know them and they became a very tight knit group, uh, which was great. So that's what we did. And that's what we'll continue to do. Some of the feedback that I got because I have a, uh, an open-ended survey uh, at the end of the semester uh, and some of the feedback I got is that um, they found themselves in the pages of this book, which Tim kind of touched on. Um, it, they touched them emotionally, these stories, um, and they could relate to them. One of the things that they wanted was to talk about them during class, which we didn't have a lot of time to do. Um, it was more of a written exercise than a verbal one. And we're gonna to try to incorporate that uh, next semester. I'm gonna to try to, to find time um, at least once a week to spend 15 or 20 minutes talking about it. My fear is that we'll get carried away um, and spend too much time doing this and not touch on the things that we not that we don't need to do this, we do. And I think it's really important, but there are other things that we need to do too. There are skills that they need to get and, and need to do as freshmen. Um, so it's gonna be hard to maintain that balance, but we'll find a way to do it. So that's what we've been doing. Thank you so much, Julie. Um... I just love conversations like this. As you could see, I was probably, I was just feverishly writing because I just, I'm sure like everybody in the room, like your head just starts to, to go and just get inspired and different ideas. And, um, and I think too, I actually appreciate what you said at the end there, Julia, because it, it, it reinforces also the, the kind of really um, unique thing about a practice like the common read is the convert, we want the conversation to extend beyond the classroom, right? So, so we want, you know, in that, that co-curricular space, like, you know, we, we have events in the fall menu for FYE that students can come in and, and talk about the common read and talk about their story. So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's space, other spaces, you know, in virtual settings, um, like we talked about at, at our recent FYS Institute, you know, we're going to build in discussions in our FYE canvas shell, like 
I feel like there's there's lots of opportunity there also for these conversations to continue mm -hmm. outside of first year seminars. So I feel like that's really exciting um, across mm -hmm. the campus, right? So so thank you for sharing that because I think that really does kind of speak to the impact that you said it's impacting our students and they want mm -hmm. to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Well, and what I've seen and what really fills my heart is I will see my students together outside of class. And, and I have, I, I teach, um, I also teach intro to film, which is a 200 person lecture class. Mm -hmm. And I'll see them together in that class too. Oh. Um, <laughs> and they become friends, Yeah, you know, and that just makes me so happy because I kind of force them together in CFA 100 and I'll see them the first week of film 100 sitting in opposite sides of the room. And then they, they come together after being in CFA 100. And, you know, it makes me so happy because they become, you know, buds and, and hang out and they've, they've kind of met their people and, you know, they, they wouldn't necessarily, and they will, reveal themselves in CFA 100 in, in ways that they, they wouldn't necessarily do otherwise. You know, we have some really gut-wrenching conversations in that class and they come out to each other in ways that they wouldn't necessarily do otherwise. So it's, it's been great and very revealing. Yeah, and I, and I think it also speaks to I mean, first year seminar in itself is a high impact practice. So you're layering, mm -hmm. you're layering, you know, one HIP into another HIP and, and, mm -hmm. and the heart. And I know many people have heard me say this, but I really feel like first year seminar is an anchor in the first year experience. So that, that's, a, it's a, it's a space there where community is built. It's a space where obviously it's a safe space. Yes. Yeah, so there's intellectual growth and um, personal growth and mm -hmm. it all connects then to the larger yeah. university experience. Um, so I think it's it's just a like I said before it's a win win because you're layering those you're inter intersecting those experiences mm -hmm. <laughs> like that Anna and Harriet <laughs> intersecting those experiences <laughs> um, within the first year experience. So um, I, I just think it's amazing the impact that you know we're seeing and obviously that we're hearing about today. So thank you to our panel for sharing. Um, before we open up for questions, I know I'm watching our, our clock, so make sure we have time. I just wanted to share this slide and just some really quick updates and context for, for what's coming for the Common Read. And these conversations obviously will continue and you'll hear continue to hear more of these about the Common Read for the coming year, but wanted to share this today in this, at least in this uh, venue. As you all heard, we are, um, UNLV is pursuing a two-year cycle for the Common Read. That's, um, so we are moving um, into this next year to stay with the, the same selection, which I think is great um, and I'm super excited about. Um, there was some feedback last year from students um, that the, they really wanted like a physical book, um, which was really interesting So um, and surprising to a lot of us, um, but not to others. So it was, it was a great conversation. But so the majority of our students for the coming year will receive hard copy books, which is exciting. Um, we will still obviously have e-books e available for our online learners and, and different um, constituencies that, that will want that. So that is um, also available. Um, well, our alignment um, is continuing as it did in year one, but just in, in different and in, in expanded ways with obviously with new student orientation, um, first year experience, like we talked about with web campus and social media in our summer series to introduce the common read and kind of get it on the radar. Our parents and families, absolutely. Um, we started connecting them last year, but that'll be a little more extensive this year with, with some of our summer planning and then into fall as that work with families continue, just so they know and are aware that, that again, these conversations are, are happening. Um, Rebel Ready Week is new this year, as you all know, on campus. So um, that is actually where we're gonna distribute the book. They're gonna get it at check-in, which is super exciting. So more to come on that. So we will definitely give you all the, the lowdown as it all clarifies in the next couple of months. Creates, again, will have a presence of the Common Read, the theme around Common Read, telling your story, 
sharing who you are, you're bringing your contributions to our community, welcome to our community, um, all of those, those me that messaging that, that is so important for that opening convocation day and that really important moment for our students as they launch their, their FYE. And then again, as we mentioned and, and why we're here today, this absolutely is a tool that is available for first year seminar faculty, for any faculty, actually, you know, any faculty on campus that are interested in using the Common Read as a tool. Um, we have a planning committee that's working really hard um, along with the library and, and different um, representatives on the planning committee to um, kind of build some resources um, for faculty who are interested um, in using it this coming year. And that'll include resources we had last year and then some new resources that we're adding for this year. So I'm going to turn it back over to our panel and open the floor for any questions that, that our attendees have for our panel and or any of us. Thank you all for being here. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Okay. Um, thank you so much for sharing the ways that you have been able to uh, use a common read to incorporate it into your class and providing a great guideline for how to actually do that with other books that are gonna be forthcoming. Um, this is the first time that I've seen it really clear and outlined um, from a, a broad and individual perspective. And Renee, thank you for sharing that, you know, sometimes we try to plan, but life takes over and we learn how to pivot and do other things, but we still have it on our map and our radar. And I think that is the best. Um, I mean, all of it has been really great, but that's the best for me because I always feel like I try to plan and I try to have it all on my list. And then I get so frustrated when I can't get to all the things that are on there. So hearing how you were able to turn and pivot and still address the main themes that, that spoke and sang to you was really, really greatly appreciated. So thank you. Other questions or comments or thoughts or ideas? There's a question in the chat. So oh. thanks for this. Is Cola thinking about incorporating this? Jeremy is asking this question. I um, am not sure. I know um, last year, I believe Jenna did, and, and I'm looking to Emily for maybe some help on this one. I'm pretty sure Jenna had some, some level of in, integration this past year, if I'm not mistaken, right, Emily? Yeah, I have the same question. I know Jenna Heath used it in her class and has a lot of great models yes. for engaging with it. I'm not sure um, how much was spread out to the 100 LA team, right? Um, but I, I think that both Denise and Jenna, I'm sure would be excited if people were interested in Absolutely. incorporating it in some way. Absolutely. And Denise has been working with our planning team. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that. So I would absolutely you know, connect back with Denise and, and Jenna and, and stay tuned if you're if you're interested, we absolutely um, can connect and, and offer that support. Great questions. Anything else? Comments, ideas? So I, I, I'm like, uh, Anna, I, I have a comment mm -hmm. that probably ends up being a question, right? Uh, for those of, of our areas like the intersection, even though we also have first year experience course, which uh, Anna teaches, but certainly, and, and she brings in elements of, of, you know, to tell me who you are, uh, but outside of the classroom, you know, uh, ways in which you all as teachers, you know, as instructors of this would like to see units like the intersection and others help bolster what's happening in, in, in your first year classes so that we can help spread this word, spread this experience and that kind of thing. What would you see? I mean, what would you suggest? What would you like to put on our table to at least think about? Or does it make sense? Maybe it doesn't make sense, I don't know. On a very practical level, I think it would be helpful to have a 
how the intersection can help you uh, e-flyer or hard copy flyer, depending on the type of uh, first year seminar course it is. Uh, some of the students read and uh, associate with the stories in the book and they, yes, they interact outside of there, but what if they're relating to those stories and it's because they have a need that's related to those stories. And this is where the intersection really connects with those students. So it might be nice to be able to include that with uh, the book and how they're working through that, that they know they have that reminder that they can come to the intersection for some of those things that don't fall into always the obvious categories on campus. Mm -hmm. Love that idea. Thank you, Timothy. Especially, I think this year because we because it is going to be such a, a more kind of physical thing, you know mm -hmm. that that we can share with them. Um, so I, I really like that because it it does it connects it like you said, Timothy, back to their experience and also entering the UNLV community. I love that. Something that could be helpful. I'm thinking about students getting like a hard cover copy of the book. And again, logistically, I have no idea how this would work, but like a bookmark of like the intersection and they just get it with the book of like, here are the services and then they just have it. Again, printing that many, I have no idea what would go into that, but it's like a quick way of, They've been given this information and if they hopefully use bookmarks then it's always there for them they can always refer to it um so just a yeah just a thought yeah the bookmark i think especially because you do you versus like a sheet of paper where they might lose it or put it somewhere else like a bookmark they're actually going to be holding on to to use it in their common read which is great i love that that's a brilliant idea great Absolutely. Now, where's our graphic designers in the group? <laughs> that would be our department. I was going to say, can somebody <laughs> design that bookmark, please? <laughs> well, your department did, in fact, uh, your students, in, uh, you know, designed our logo. Oh, our students, students are brilliant, Dr. Oh, Barlow. Yes. They're brilliant. I know they are. I know they I are. I really love that bookmark idea because we could absolutely pass it out with the, with the book at Rebel Ruddy Week. Mm -hmm. Hey, Julie, can, mm -hmm. can, can we work on that? Can we? Uh, you know what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> as I just speak for our entire college. <laughs> of course. Sure. <laughs> Why not? <Sure. laughs> I'll second you. It's OK. okay. Mm -hmm. Power in numbers, right? <laughs> That's great. For you, Dr. Barlow, anything. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I mean, like I said, we just really wanted to, to make sure that we are complimenting, compl complimentary to whatever else is going mm -hmm. on. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that it makes sense. I, I you know me, I, we don't really want to do uh, programs or initiatives or activities that, that aren't going to have some level of high impact, right? Uh -huh. You know, so, um, this is one of the things that, that we've been talking about for a minute, so. Well, and I think, and, and I know for me, and I can speak for at least a couple of the other instructors, anytime there are um, events that we care about, I always put an announcement on my webpage um, that this is going on and I let my students know, check this out. If, if this is something you're interested in, go. You know, because a lot of them, when they first get here, they, they're a little displaced, you know? And so I make sure they know what's available and check this out. And so some of them go, some of them don't. Sure, no, absolutely. But it's, uh -huh. Yeah, and we do have a couple, a couple things drafted for the fall FYE menu, so we would absolutely love Love to work with you, intersection team. Um, if, if you're interested in any of those, we can kind of talk offline about that. But yeah, of course, we're interested. Yeah. But Dr. Balo, email me with the information, um, and I will get in touch with the necessary people, and we can make that happen. Okay, so what information um, do you want? Are you talking about Just whatever our... you want? Whatever you want on a bookmark. 
I think that's going to be such a great ad. That's wonderful. What an exciting thing to come out of this professor circle today. I love it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Julie. Any other questions or comments or anything else that Anna, you or Harriet wanted to share before we close for today? So Emily is saying having also the uh, Academic Success Center and a uh, writing center on the bookmark too something awesome. maybe but it just seems like it, that could be kind of fun to have like a helpful kind of cheat sheet of a lot of different hmm. resources food pantry i mean it does there's only so much space um but i bet there could be somebody who could figure out a creative way to share some of those things mm -hmm. maybe the women's center which i know isn't called the women's center anymore yeah that's a great idea Maybe thinking about like what, yeah, that's hard. I, I agree with you. I'm like, because you think like, what is the most, like, what do you want them most to know in that moment that they mm -hmm. arrived to Rebel Ready Week? Like, you know, the top kind of five things to know, but um, it's hard to narrow that down for sure. Even potentially something really simple on one side that would be really focused and it could be kind of like a directory on the other side that would be more like, mm have some listed or, or something like that. So there can be that kind of focused messaging maybe around the intersection or around some mm -hmm. of these things, but then the back could be, you know, some lists of other things that give them a starting point. Yeah. Well, let me know. Thanks, Julie. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, dates for first year experience dates would be great. Yep, we're um, just finishing up our menu, our fall menu now. We've been um, waiting on a couple things, but it's it's pretty close to being done. So. Okay. Okay, so we'll do some brainstorming. Everybody yeah. who's on here, uh, you know, just uh, send me a couple, you know, email with your brainstorm mm -hmm. thoughts, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, of course, the biggest thing that I'm looking, I think about now is how many, right? That equals right. cost. So, you know, how many are we talking about um, that, that would be needed? But I can at least uh, commit that we will do something up to obviously a point, unless we have additional contributors to it, which is always a possibility. Mm -hmm. all so much again for coming today we very much appreciate everybody um, being here and being part of this conversation um, i know it's going to continue um, which is great so i i put our um, email on the screen you can reach out to me directly as well um, if you have questions or if you just want to have additional conversations about the common rave um, anytime or fye or anything so um, so thank you all very much for being here and we look forward to the next time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.